Hello, my name is Gabe, and this is Awesome Kingdom Opinions. Today I'm going to talk to you about my opinion of the book The Fox by Frederick Forsyth. Now, if you just want to hear my opinion about the book, here you go. I don't like it. This review will talk about the entire book and everything about it, so if you want to read the book for some reason, don't watch this review. If you want to skip to a specific section of this review, skip to these timestamps on the screen now. The book starts with a British kid hacking into some nigh unhackable US government facility. He is of course arrested for this, and instead of punishing him, the British government uses him to hack to their enemies. First, they hack into a Russian boat, then someone tries to kill him, but the flawless ex-spy put in charge of him stops it flawlessly with no complications. Then he hacks into Iran, and someone from Iran tries to kill him. But the aforementioned flawless ex-spy once again stops it with no complications. Starting to see a pattern? Well, guess what? Ugh. He hacks North Korea's nuke manufacturer in Russia, so Russian assassins again, but don't worry. The flawless ex-spy flawlessly stops it with no complications. They move location and Russia sends a sniper. But don't worry, you guessed it, no complications, immediately stopped, even though he wasn't even aware of the sniper beforehand. Then the kid goes outside and trips on a rock that steals his ability to hack as well as he did. Before that, he hacked North Korea, and Kim Jong-un gets arrested. Yay! Before we get into the meat of this review, I'm gonna give this book some credit. It's well written and has really decent structure, and up until they actually recruit the kid, I'm actually really interested. But after they recruit him, well, you saw the summary. Yeah, the book goes downhill after that very fast. I'll start with kind of one of the more minor problems with this book. The book tangents a lot. Like, they do this from page one. Once the book starts describing something, no matter how relevant it is to the story, the book will go into every detail about that thing, which can get rather boring. As an example, the book describes Al-Qaeda very early on, and they go into the entire history of Al-Qaeda, despite Al-Qaeda having literally nothing to do with this story whatsoever. This one's another minor one, but it's probably a little more infuriating to the last. At least for me. So the kid has a father, and the father's role in the story is this. The father is not happy with his marriage, so after the kid gets picked up by the British government, he immigrates to America. And then when the Russians discover the kid exists, they capture him to try and get the kid's location. The book makes a point of saying he said nothing, and then they kill him. And he's never brought up again. In other words, his existence is completely and utterly pointless. Now, the kid, who is supposed to be the most important part of this book, you can pretty much pin his entire existence in the book to one page. It pretty much always goes like this. I need you to hack the thing, he hacked it, and we never see him again for seven chapters. And this is how it goes for the entire time. The book's worst problem, in my opinion, is this. It's supposed to be a thriller, yet it's not very thrilling when every problem gets resolved immediately without any tension. I just don't worry at that point, you know? And therein lies it. That's the book's worst problem. When I was looking up some information on this book online, I found a lot of people wondering if this book was ghostwritten. That is to say, written by someone else under the author's name. I'm inclined to disagree. Mind you, I have not read any of the author's previous work. But there are signs of a really good author in this book. Very good sentence structure, a very strong start, and there's signs that clearly a lot of effort was put into this book. Just unfortunately not enough. What I did notice, however, was that that flawless ex-spy I told you about is a 70-year-old ex-spy who is both BFF with the Prime Minister and knighted by the Queen. It sounds to me like it's an idealized version of the author, and that's where I think this book comes from. I think something must have made the author feel out of touch. He wrote this book to show he was still relevant. Unfortunately, it seemed to have the opposite effect. It's a shame, but there are a lot worse reasons, in my opinion, to write a bad book. 
There are two angles of approach to make this book better. Number one, the thriller angle. Focus more on one enemy, like that Russian spy who is mentioned quite a few times in the book. Have the ex-spy and the Russian spy interact, and make the hacks take longer than an instant so that the Russians have a chance to actually stop it. And give the Russians some kills. Not some main characters, but there are a whole mess of red shirts available, so let them have a few of them. Emotionally. In the book, there's a go between the ex-spy and the kid. Remove him and have the ex-spy live with the kid, and have the book focus more on everyone's adjustment to these new circumstances. Have us spend more time with the kid so that we care about him. No matter what, let the sniper shoot the kid. You want him to end up with brain damage anyways, and honestly, a rock causing it is stupid when you have a sniper. Also drop North Korea, that stuff is just pointless and really hurts the rest of the story. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you want to see more, do subscribe. Thank you for watching. Good night.